guys, it is Tyler here, back once again with another episode of my Assassin's Creed Origins Countdown series. This is the number nine thing that I'm excited about. Now, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, we are just 34 days away from the release of Assassin's Creed Origins, just over a month. So, it's getting close. It's very exciting. Now, time for the number nine thing that I'm excited about in Assassin's Creed Origins, and that is... Bayek. That's right, Bayek, our main protagonist in Assassin's Creed Origins. Now, he's not higher on the list, uh, mainly because it's very hard with characters, I've learnt, as a fan for so many years of this franchise, that you can't really tell what the character's gonna be like until the character is playable, right? Until the game's out, essentially. You don't really know, it's hard to gauge it. Uh, you can take away a couple of things, right? Obviously, his storyline that they're kind of introducing to us, some of his interactions with the other characters we see throughout demos and trailers and things like that. But even then, marketing can really misplace what the game's really about. It happens a lot with all games, including past Assassin's Creed games. Now, Bike's an interesting one because obviously we're not getting this introduction to him as like a young man growing into an assassin or him as a Magi in Egypt. You know, he's in his 30s when uh, we start playing as him, or at least for the main section that we're playing as Bayek in Assassin's Creed Origins. Now, the interesting thing is, we've only had that happen a couple times in the Assassin's Creed franchise. Obviously, we got that introduction to Ezio, to Connor. We didn't have it to Edward as much, but he was only like 21 when the game started. He was still a young man. Uh, same with Arno. It's more of a character such as Jacob and Evie, or all the way back to Assassin's Creed 1 with Altair, that we got these characters where they've had a whole kind of history before the game actually takes place. Now that's interesting because you look at those two characters that we've played as, or at least those two games we've had those characters in, Jacob and Evie, we didn't get to see much of that backstory, right? We didn't really even get things alluded to, we were just kind of thrown into these characters, and I didn't think that was quite as effective. I'll tell you, you even got hints, even back then, for characters like Abbas and things like that in the first game. They had a sort of backstory, you could tell that was there, a history sort of there, because people kept talking about what he was like and what he used to be and how he grew up. There's a, people alluding to things, so you know there's a history there. I hope that's kind of the case with someone like Bayek. Because he sounds like he has an interesting history. Obviously, we're going to see things like that because he has his wife as a character that's in there. And I think that makes a bit more of an interesting dynamic. It is something different, it is something unique, and there's nothing wrong with trying things that are different, right? I think at this point, it's all you can really do, rather than trying to repeat or redo things you've already done before. Because some things don't work, and some things can only work at a certain place. Someone like Ezio, I feel like, only worked at the time in that setting sort of thing. It wouldn't really work in ancient Egypt. So at first you might think, oh, is he gonna be another Connor or something? But you see his interactions with other characters, you see having his wife in there as well, that he's quite unique. Like, I don't think we've seen a character even close to like Bayek, at least from what I can tell. And like a lot of assassins, a reason the Bayek stands alongside them is you can tell that he has that sense of duty that all these assassins have, that sense of honor. And that's what it kind of attracts people to the Assassin Order, right? It's that he'll do whatever it takes to do what is right, or to do the right thing, essentially. And I think Bayek's going to be a character that's going to come across a lot of enemies in that time. He's going to change a lot from being a Magi into developing the Assassin Order. And he's going to be a character that is going to go through a lot of hardships. He's obviously got a lot he cares about with Egypt, what he wants it to be, his people, his wife as well. I think those are going to be all things that he loses throughout this game and he's gonna have to in a way kind of lose everything and be nothing and kind of rebuild and be reborn and create the assassin order alongside it that's where i see by it going he's a character we've not seen anything like him before that's why he stands out to me that's why i'm excited to play as bayek in this game so ladies and gentlemen that's why I'm excited for Bayek in Assassin's Creed Origins. Let me know what you think of Bayek down in the comments below. And I will see you guys very soon for the number 8 thing that I'm excited about in Assassin's Creed Origins. And as well, if you enjoyed this, be sure to like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. I don't run any ads on this channel, so if you feel like supporting me, even if it's just $1, just head over to patreon.com slash as always. You get bonus podcast content and you support James and myself. 
over there as well. It's exclusive access to early content. And once we hit $250 per month, which we're almost at, we're going to do an exclusive Patreon Let's Play series over there. So be sure to head over if you feel like it. Or if not, enjoy this ad-free content, and I'll see you guys next time.